Hi everybody, happy Sunday. Hey, it's Linda Anderson here from Linda Lou Creates. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I'm going to share some in colors, one of two, which are my absolute favorite. I do an in color club each month. Um, I know you just, you don't care about the club. You just want to know what my, <laughs> one of my two favorites. So parakeet party. Yes. This one and another one are my favorite of the five that were released. I like them all. This one's my favorite. So, back to my In Color Club. Since I answered the the uh, the mystery of which one's my favorite, um, I each month for five months you will get a fun package in the mail. There's going to be a package of cardstock, the ink pad refill. Um, there's going to be designer series paper in that color for the month, glimmer paper in that color, uh, a stamp and write marker, blends, embellishments, ribbon. Yeah, I think that might be everything that's going to come in it as far as product and everything will be featuring this month, Parakeet Party. Also included will be uh, envelopes stuffed with the cut up cardstock that you're going to need to make eight cards. That's uh, two cards each of four designs, so a total of eight. I will send the tutorial also. So, real quick, these are the cards that you're going to receive the tutorial to make. Now, let me show you the bundle I used on these cards. And it is the Nature's Prints. Uh, it com comes with the Natural Prints dies. Um, I am fascinated by these. I just haven't stopped using them in a while. So I will have everything cut out for you. You supply the stamps. Um, it doesn't have to be this stamp set. You can definitely use whatever it is you have on hand. So use your own supplies with this. So you will be receiving then the ink, everything you'll get, the ribbon, the embellishments. I will have the die cut here. I will have it already embossed. So all of this will come to you along with all those uh, other, like I said, parakeet party um, supplies. You cut them up. Uh, following my tutorial. So the price, $50. Uh, if you want to go to my blog, lindalucreates.com, um, you'll see then where you can click on it and fill out um, a little sign me up type form and we'll get you going with yours. All right. Now today I wanted to do another to give you two more ideas. So some bonus ideas with that that uh, color, the parakeet party. So let me bring in these cards that I'm gonna share with you tonight on how to make them. Now, the fun thing is they all use, again, one of my favorite types of things to do, and that is using the blending brush and a stencil. Now you're gonna say, I don't recall any of these shapes and what have you of stencils. That's because I made them myself. Um, I made the stencils. So let me show you what I mean. And so that's for this card. The first one I'm gonna show you. Let me set this one off to the side. What I did was cut a piece of, <coughs> excuse me, basic white. And I just used one of the layering circles. The scalloped, of course, cut it out. And now this is my template or my stencil in which to create this card. So there is not, any layers here. This is just inked onto here. So let me show you again what I mean by that. So here's what it is. I have my top folding card, 11 by four and a quarter. I just have a blank inside here, piece of, of uh, basic white. Now, this is kind of a fun thing that I like to do is doing the three and three quarter by five and then uh, my black layer is just an eighth of an inch bigger. So that means three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. So let me set this off to the side. All right, so I happen to cut this piece of the basic white the same size. So that means it's also three and three quarters 
by five. That way it's just um, a little bit easier for me. So I just have some removable tape here and I am just, I am so sorry, I just bumped the camera. I apologize. You're probably like, whoa. Uh, if you hear crunching in the background, my cat just popped in. He pushed the door open so he could come in. His dish is in here with me. So uh, hopefully it doesn't get too loud out, out there in the uh, living room. We are watching the hockey game. So hopefully it stays somewhat quiet. So let me get some paper. I have my ink, my parakeet party. I have a blending brush. So let me go ahead and load it up. Now I like to kind of wipe off a little bit of the excess and then get started doing my blending. Um, I think you've seen me do this before and I tell you it all the time. I am heavy handed when I do blending. So that's why I'm holding it up near the top. If this was something I wanted to not um, do quite so heavy, I would hold it at the end of the brush or at the end of the uh, handle instead. But because I'm also lazy and I want to get this done quickly, I go ahead and load it up and get going at it. I'm holding it up near here so I can apply a lot of pressure. So do it as much as you want till you get the results that you like. So this is great for those clean and simple cards, cards that you want to get in the mail that you don't want to have a lot of bulk on it. This is perfect way to do it. All right, so let me just close up my ink pad. Now, let's go ahead. You know what, because I know I get inky with blending. I better do that too, is wipe my fingers off. So, let me come in here now and get my tape off of here. Okay, so here we go. All right, it's not gonna, <laughs> there we go. And this tape is stronger than it looks. All right, so here is And nothing, there's no layer. This is just what you blended on here using this template here. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish making up this card. I'm gonna layer this up with my black for right now. And there is one more thing that I wanna show you. I do have this tape on the back here. Let me get rid of that. When I cut it, I didn't actually get rid of that tape so let me see sorry about that i'm trying to go so fast so i can get back there and watch that hockey game so anyways so how's everybody's uh weekend been it's been very warm here nice um my son just got back he was in chicago for a wedding so we are Pittsburgh, so he just landed not that long ago, made it home okay, and uh, sounded like it was a great, great time for the wedding. So, yes, I am trying to uh, talk you through this. Well, you know what? It's just going to have to stay. Let's get this adhered down. All right, so here's where I'm gonna go and put it onto that piece of black that's an eighth of an inch bigger. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put this down to my card base and then show you the little trick that I like to do with some of these intricate dies, okay? So let me make sure I have that correct. Yeah, all right, so. Perfect. Okay, let me set this off to the side. Now, as you can see, a lot of times I would stamp the image and then put the die over it, cut it out. Sometimes the die would shift. Uh, what if I wanted to make multiples of it? That's what I wanna show you here on what I did with that. First of all, a stamp positioning tool. Of course, I'm using the Stamparatus. 
So I have the fern that happens to be my favorite one out of that that stamp set, uh, natural nature's prints rather. So let me put. I have my my uh, grid paper here. I'm just going to stamp it real quick onto there. Now I'm not going to take off my my stamp. It's going to stay on there. Being the cling stamp, it has that padding in it. So I was a I uh, just removed the black foam mat that goes into the Stamparatus. Now I have. I have a lot of these, but let me find the one. Here is a template that I've made that I've cut out my uh, fern. So I'm going to use that in which I am going to place it over what I stamped right here. All right, so let me go ahead and put the magnets down. Now I have a plain white die cut. I just die cut a bunch of these out and just like a puzzle, I'm going to fit it right in there. Okay. Now in there it goes. Since I did not move my stamp, I can go ahead and stamp right onto that die cut. And I have a perfect die cut fern can't get it out. Well, use your pick tool. Never knew it was meant to pick dies up and out of the stamparatus, did you? So here I have it now, perfectly die cut image. So I'm going to use that. Let me take this off because I'm going to use this on a block for my next card. And I'm going to use this also for my next card. I have you intrigued, don't I? <laughs> So, here we go. Now, let's get the rest of this card put together. I have the, I did it the same way using this stem here. Um, I did the same technique. So, all I'm going to do is layer these up. I'm going to just cut a little bit off of the stem. All right. So, here we go. Just like, mm, about like that. All right, I'm gonna put them together. So let me put a little bit of glue here. Layer these two together. All right, now I'm gonna find my dimensionals. And let's get this in going. All right. And if I could find my mini ones, I would do that too. But of course, because I want them, I can't find them. All right, this'll do. All right. You know me and my dimensionals. I like using a lot of them. So here we go. Let me bring in my card. I am going to place the hello, which I used uh, another set of dies, the stylish shapes. Cut that out using one of the sentiments from the nature's prints. And just some memento black ink. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that down here. Let's get this. You know what? I'm going to see if I can pop on another dimensional because I do not like any sag on my pieces here. So let's do that. <laughs> so here we go. I am soon going to have to close my door to my room because I can hear everything going on out in the living room. So here is where I'm going to put. And there we go. Let's put a couple little uh, embellishments. So these are the matte dots that you will get as part of your In Color Club for this month. These are really cool. It took me a while to, to notice it, but they are an ombre effect. So it's darker all the way to the lighter of the same shade of the parakeet party. So um, uh, very cool. So 
Um, I hadn't noticed that initially. So how about that? So let me just put these three on and we're gonna call that one done. All right, so let me just go and close my door so that we're not getting any noise. Okay, and now let's move on to the second card. Now, I cannot take credit for this card. Uh, I saw another demonstrator make this and I do not have her name. I saw it real quick. I'm like, what an awesome idea. And then I never wrote it down. So if anyone knows who created this, please don't hesitate to say it because it was not me. <laughs> so here we go. Same measurements for everything. The only thing I did was I cut my card base um, to be in the landscape mode. So that means that it's at five and a half by, um, let me make that eight and a half by five and a half. All right. So here is the inside and I did the same technique for this on the inside as um, what I'm going to show you from the outside as well. So let's go ahead. So we're talking the white that is five by three and three quarters, the black mat, an eighth of an inch bigger. So here we go. Let's go ahead and get started with that. Now, I want to start first by stamping my sentiment. Um, there's nothing worse than creating a card and then being like, oh man, I don't have anywhere to put my sentiment. So the trick to that is stamp your sentiment first. So that's what I'm gonna do. Memento, black ink. Let me come in here. I hope I don't hit the camera. And right there. Okay, got it. Next, I am going to go ahead using my Parakeet Party ink. I'm gonna go ahead and get started stamping some of the images, again, from that Nature's Prints. So I'm gonna do, I love this fern, so let's do it here. Okay, this big spray, let me get that in there too since it's quite large. I wanna make sure that I have enough room for it. Okay, so let's pop it right here. Now, this sprig, I'm going to put one here, and then since I like the fern so much, I am going to put another fern on there as well. So these are just some more ideas for a couple more cards then, using the parakeet party ink paper yeah I didn't use are you shocked that I didn't use any of the pattern paper yeah I, I'm kind of shocked too so all right so now the trick you saw it earlier I have these templates made up I die cut out the shape and I'm using this just like I did the uh, scallop circle I'm going to use this now as a guide, as my own handmade stencil, so to speak. And I'm going to hold my brush at the handle because I want to use a very light hand with this. I'll even rub off as much ink as I can because I'm just obviously using a tone on tone. Not going too crazy. And let's see what that looks like. Boom adds that really cool shadow effect right there. So now let me do this one over here. Just kind of line that up. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as this. Okay. Now I I'm done with the fern. Let me get now this larger one here. I do have some uh, of the removable tape that I'm using then to just kind of help help me hold this down. 
Otherwise it would go flying, I have no doubt. So this one's a little bit trickier because it has some of these little points that stick out. You just have to be careful with those, all right? That they don't bend up on you, all right? So let's go ahead, and because I said that, it's going to, right? <laughs> so I do like to go clockwise and counterclockwise um, just to make sure that I'm hitting all parts of it. See, and I'm not holding on to my card layer. So if you do this, make sure you keep your hand down on it so it's not moving around as well as the stencil itself. So, but it really doesn't take much ink to get that one done, to get any of them done for that matter. So I do have one more. Let me just turn this upside down so I can get this one put in there. So yeah, when you use this negative, you can use it as a, a guide when you are um, die cutting and wanting to put the die cut piece back in there in the Stamparatus like I showed you with the first card. You can also keep it then to use it as a, a stencil, just like I'm doing now. And there it is, it's that quick to have that cool of a background then, is to give those little shadows then to those images love it so <laughs> now comes for the fun but messy part um you can see that i did some splatters in this um let me show you that um, i'm gonna kind of i feel like i need almost like a drop cloth for on my uh, work surface here i normally have a a box that i put whenever i do this splattering uh, I have a box, but um, I forgot it. I realized that halfway through my live, so we're going to go with it. So here's what I'm going to do is just do what I can. I just have a little bit of water. I happen to have a paintbrush. Now, Stampin' Up! does sell these uh, paintbrushes that are filled with water. You can use these as well. I just can't find the one that has is a smaller uh, paintbrush uh, of the end of it here. The smaller the brush, the smaller the splatter. I used a bigger paintbrush on my first sample and look at the big blobs that I got. So this tells you then exactly what uh, how it, what the difference is going to be. This compared to this. All right. So I liked and all I wanted were those little ones there. So before I get going on that, one thing I'm going to do, I just have a little piece of paper. I'm covering up my sentiment. Call me crazy, but it sometimes those splatters that you have no control over um, will go right in the middle of your word and just make it look kind of goofy. So I like to cover it up, but you're really not going to realize that it was covered up once you lift that up. I have my Memento ink pad. I have a clear acrylic block. You can use, if you prefer, the refill and put a drop on there. I just found it just as easy to do this. Now, I'm just going to start adding water to it, watering it down as much as you want. Okay, while I'm doing this, I'm kind of loading up my brush and I'm going to hit my finger with it and it will start to send splatters kind of everywhere, but more so, hopefully, <laughs> just on my card. All right. You can water it down more if you want. I just want to see if I can get one right in here. Okay, that's it, I'm done. Um, stop as soon, as soon as you can. Uh, if, if you think it's like, oh, am I happy with that? Stop, <laughs> that's my advice on that. Now let me take off that paper and see you really don't realize that it was covered up but I'm happy that I do that because you never know where those splatters are going to go within your sentiment. And I'm just so much happier whenever I just cover it up. So, all right, tell you what, 
this is already essentially dry. I'm not too worried about it at this point being wet. If you wanted to, you could always zap it with your heat tool, but I'm okay with the way it is right now. So let's get this adhered down. Let me get, I found myself a new bottle of glue apparently. I have like five bottles of glue here and um, I usually either find the one that has no glue in it or in this case, I got a brand new one. Okay, so very cool here. Now let me just show you the inside here again. So again on the inside, I did the very same technique. Use that template made a stencil and and did a little bit for the inside of the card so same thing as what i did on the outside okay so let's go ahead and get this on now and then we are almost done all i'm gonna do is add some add some embellishments and then that's it this one you want the front of the card and all that stenciling and blending that you did to shine I feel like the splatters are an embellishment almost of themselves. So let me bring these back in though, because I do like these dots. So I am going to add some of them right here. And let's put one over here. All right, and that's it. So two more card ideas, some bonus card ideas for those in, in my color, in color club to, uh, to use their supplies with. So one real quick thing before I let you go, again, if you're interested in my in color club, stop on over at my blog, lindalucreates.com. You'll see uh, an option up near the top it says uh, in color club but if you are someone who would like to get in color products for free hmm how can that happen well this is what you're gonna do is you will purchase a starter kit $125 worth of product for $99 and free shipping for the month of May Stampin Up is holding a special if you sign up before the end of May, you will get $66.50 of brand new in color products absolutely free. It is the grid paper. It is the ink pad collection. Fabulous right there. It is the cardstock uh, assortment. Fabulous. <laughs> in, color in color DSP assortment love it all of that $66.50 will be included in your starter kit absolutely free and you will get free shipping for all of this as well so if you are signed up for the in color club and would like to instead take uh, advantage of this let me know we'll talk and we'll get you signed up for this instead and you will get some of your own products. Just so you know, I do uh, have a tutorial that I send out and um, you know, if I just might send you the tutorial as well for all of the, uh, or you'll be able to get the tutorial for all of the stuff that I make with my, from those in my In Color Club. So kind of cool. So anyway, well, hey guys, thanks so much for hanging with me. I really do appreciate it. And I hope you have a great day week. All right. I'll see you next Sunday. Bye now.